great. Uh, so, uh, people remember the, uh, the, the primal objective function that we had for uh, SVMs. Uh, so, this is a primal objective function we had for SVMs. So, one way of thinking about it is to say that I am going to write it the following way. some jugglery so the alphas I have replaced it with a lambda here okay and uh, well you know x i transpose beta plus beta naught is actually f right f of x i right so I have written f of f f um, or s should be f of x i sorry yeah that is f of x i and then essentially the same objective function except for this plus thingy here. So, what does a plus thingy mean? So, it means that I will count this only whenever this is positive right whenever it is negative I will read it as 0 does it make sense I will count this only whenever it is positive whenever it is negative I will make it I will consider it as 0. So, that is what the plus term here indicates huh? they went into lambdas I mean I kind of redid this thing right. So, I divided everything by some factor of alphas and moved it to lambda there ok. Right. So, if you stop a minute this should look familiar to you what does it look like? Ridge regression right Ridge regression. So, you have a loss function ok and you have a penalty term right does not it look like that. So, so far we have been talking about norm beta squared as being the objective function that you are trying to minimize and the other thing as constraints right and then we then wrote the Lagrangian and then we got the constraints into the objective function. So, now I am saying you can think of another way of writing the objective function which is to say that there is this loss function right which is accounted whenever it is negative right. So, now your goal is to minimize this. So, how will this loss function look like? Right. So, when y f x is 1, after that it will be 0 right that loss function I am only talking about the loss function not about the penalty term right. But till y f x becomes 1 it is going to be a linear function right you can see that right it is just 1 minus y f x. So, it is going to be a linear function of y f x right is it clear. Right. So, this kind of a loss function where this is like a door or a book opening on a hinge. <coughs> 
right if you think about it this is like two flaps of a book or a door right and it is opening on the hinge which is here right so it's also called right so sometimes if you have uh, read about svms elsewhere uh, you might have uh, heard that the svms minimize hinge loss right so this is exactly what we are doing here so the hinge loss actually arises from the constraints that we are imposing on the svm right but if you think about it where did the constraints come from why were the constraints imposed what is the semantics of the constraint i don't want you to get yeah well, what was the what was right we wanted to make sure that they are correct and a certain distance away right that is the reason for this so in effect the constraints were enforcing the correctness of the solution right and what the objective function originally was enforcing was essentially the robustness of the solution how far away are you from the hyperplane right the constraints were making sure that you were on the right side of the hyperplane right if you think about it right so in in effect the constraints are an important part of what you are trying to optimize it's just not the distance from the hyperplane that matters but it's also matters that you should be on the right side of the hyperplane right so the putting it as a hinge loss makes it explicit right i'm saying okay this is the <coughs> loss function i'm interested in right so that essentially tells me okay i'm interested in the correctness i want to make sure that all my data points are correctly classified okay and uh, the penalty tells me okay make sure it is a small norm solution right this essentially becomes like ridge regression okay make sure that the squared loss is as little as possible at the same time make sure that the norm of the solution is also small right so that's what we did right we did we enforce the l2 norm in the ridge regression case and we are doing the same thing in the svm case okay does it make sense now we can ask interesting questions like okay if i replace this with some other norm penalty what will happen can you do l1 regularized svms hmm? no that was that was regression So L1 regularized regression was lasso. Can you do like lasso like regularization for SVMs? So instead of beta squared, if you put beta, what happens? What do you think will happen? You have a much harder optimization problem on your hand, but it's actually a valid thing, right? So what it will try to do, if you remember, we talked about this in lasso. I mean, I did it in a uh, admittedly a little hand wavy fashion, but uh, we talked about how it will enforce sparsity right we said it will try to make as many coefficients zero as possible right so in this case what do you think will happen if i put uh, norm can it enforce sparsity will it reduce the number of support vectors does that enforce sparsity think about it what is that Right, the squared loss is actually like this okay so if you think about it it's a little weird right so if you are to this side you are actually correct right but the farther away you are from the hyperplane on the right hand side also you still contribute to the loss because of the squared error function right whether you are on the right side or the wrong side of the hyperplane you still contribute to the loss okay so so, so that's why sometimes the squared error function is not the ideal thing to minimize so the hinge loss more often than not gives you a much better solution than optimizing squared error right so what will the squared error be 
that is what the square, square loss function is. So, normally you are used to seeing this as y minus f of x the whole square, but I have written it as 1 minus y f of x that is also fine because if it is correct y f of x will be 1 all the time right. So, right. so what is the actual loss function that you want? this is fine that is the actual loss function you want right what is the loss function called 0 1 right 0 1 is what you really want right it should be 0 if it is correct and it should be 1 if it is incorrect right 0 1 is what you really want and uh, a lot of this is just like a segue right it is not really I am not going to test you or anything on it just for your interest a lot of work in theory in machine learning goes into showing that hey if you optimize some other loss function okay, will you end up with the same solution as if you optimize the 0 1 loss. Right. So, if you take the 0 1 loss I try to find a solution for it right I am trying to find the beta that gives me the smallest possible 0 1 loss right it is the smallest possible 0 1 loss 0. depends on the okay. and linearly yeah so there is two points right right depends on the data and you said linearly separable but why because you chose to use a linear classifier right so so depending on the what what uh, family of classifiers you choose and the and the data okay you, the minimum 0 1 loss could be 0 or it could be something higher right so when I say minimize the 0 1 loss I mean whatever is the minimum possible achievable given the data distribution and the class of uh, cl I mean the class of classifiers or the family of classifiers you have chosen given that what is the minimum achievable will you be somewhere close to that if I minimize a different loss function right. So, that is an interesting question to ask right. So, I can arbitrarily come up with other loss functions I can come up with hinge loss I take squared loss. So, if you minimize hinge loss or squared loss will I get the same solution as I would have gotten if I had minimized 0 1 loss right. So, that is something uh, people do uh, think about right. So, we did look at one other loss function which is the I guess it was something like that So, that is what we minimized actually in the logistic regression case even though we did not write it out explicitly as a loss function right. So, if you think about it right, this is what we actually minimized in the logistic regression case also you are trying to what were we trying to do what did we do in the logistic regression case what did we do to estimate parameters we did maximum likelihood right. So, we made some assumptions about the uh, distribution and then we try to maximize the likelihood and, and so on and so forth right. So, if you work through that you can if you write it out as a loss function it turns out that this is what you are trying to. So, you can see that this never goes to 0 right this is going to go like this ok, but then you can still think of minimizing that. So, we will that is just an aside you do not have to worry about the logistic loss function right now we will come back to that later right.